Happy Easter. The Lord has risen. Happy Easter. He is risen. <laughs> Happy Easter! He is risen! Well, Happy Easter! He is risen! Welcome to our Easter morning service. It's great to have you with us. A couple of things to mention before we begin our service. First of all, do join with us. We're going to be having a day of prayer for the whole of the pandemic and the issues around it this coming Thursday. We're going to be putting information out, Facebook, website, email. So do please have a look at it and join us as together in each of our homes we pray about this situation. Also to say Spring Harvest, a convention full of excellent teaching and worship. Um, it's something we normally go to as a church, but this year we can't. So this is all online and it's starting tomorrow, Easter Monday. Do join in, even if you weren't planning to go on the group. It's all free and we're going to be looking at the Book of Acts. You, we're putting information out, website, Facebook and email. But um, if you just like to Google Spring Harvest Home, you should be able to follow it from there. Chris, my wife, was saying this Easter day in particular, it's really strange not being with other people. And I know as she, she feels, and I'm sure you feel the same as well. But it's not the first time in history that Christians have been isolated. It has happened before. Nonetheless, the risen Lord is present with us all. So in our hearts, let's Prepare to worship him now. In our service you'll find it's peppered with the word Alleluia and with good reason, for this is the best of times. Jesus Christ is risen today. Welcome to our Easter Day communion as we meet in Christ's name to celebrate the resurrection. Churches around the world today begin their services with an ancient greeting and so with them and with the hosts of heaven, we acclaim that Christ is risen. The response to the acclamation is, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We come to praise God with the saints and angels around God's throne and with the choirs of earth to lift our voices to sing with joy. For our Saviour lives, and so we join together in singing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our time of confession. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We hear now the Gospel reading for this morning and then Tom will bring us the Word of God for today. Our Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8, and I'm reading from the International Children's Bible. The day after the Sabbath day, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought some sweet-smelling spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on that day, the first day of the week, the women were on their way to the tomb. It was soon after sunrise. They said to each other, there is a large stone covering the entrance of the tomb. Who will move the stone for us? Then the women looked and saw that the stone was already moved. The stone was very large, but it was moved away from the entrance. The women entered the tomb and saw a young man wearing a white robe. He was sitting on the right side, and the women were afraid. But the man said, Don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus from Nazareth, the one who was killed on a cross. He has risen from death. He is not here. Look, here is the place they laid him. Now go and tell his followers and Peter. Jesus is going into Galilee. He will be there before you. You will see him there as he told you before. The women were confused and shaking with fear. They left the tomb and ran away. They did not tell anyone about what happened because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want us to start by thinking what it means to be thrown by situation. One for me would be the British weather. There's been many times when I've gone out in the morning for a walk and I put on many layers and a cagoule and find it's miles too hot and I've got all these surplus clothes. Or maybe that time when I thought I was going to an office social and I turned up in jeans and t-shirts, only to discover how everyone else was in jackets and ties. We know what it's like to be thrown sometimes by situations. And we can forget what a shock it was for those women who first came to the tomb. We know what was to happen. I always associate the start of Easter morning with the dawn of new hope. But it was not like that on that first Sunday. 
Those women thought they were dealing with the aftermath of a tragedy. They'd come at the first opportunity after the Sabbath to prepare Jesus's body in death. And they came across something they didn't expect. The graveside, as it were, was uncovered. The stone was rolled away and an angel spoke to them, saying, He, this Jesus you thought was dead, is not here. You thought one thing and it's something else. And that assumption, you thought one thing and it's something else, would apply to many people and what they thought was what was happening during Jesus's final week. You thought he was an overly religious troublemaker who'd made one too many enemies. And so now he's paid the price. You thought the Passover was a particularly tense time and the Romans had an eye on the mood of the crowd. And to calm them down, they had a man that many seemed to hate put to death. You saw your leader flogged and collapsing and exhausted was left to die on a cross. You thought all these things meant that it was Jesus' final end. But he is not there. He, the angel said, is not here. He is risen. This is what the women heard the angel say, and it's what they told the disciples in fear and amazement. He is not here. He is risen. It's the centre of our Christian faith. It means that you and I aren't just stuck with the feelings and reality, disappointment or failure of death, which is how those first women must have approached the tomb. No, because of that Sunday morning, you and I aren't stuck in those places. Let me give you an example. People talk about guilt, which never seems to resolve and eats away at them or being trapped in feelings of anger or resentment. But in these things, Jesus is not here. His rising means you and I can discover freedom and forgiveness. Or our society thinks, well, who knows what's around the corner and one day we'll die and that'll be it. So let's seek as much pleasure and entertainment as we can now while there's still time. But as a result of that morning, we have a hope beyond death. And it means we don't have to make a frenzied grab for pleasure now. And at the moment, with the pandemic upon us, there are many feelings, understandably, of loneliness and fear. There's no disguising it's tough. Staying at home is difficult. We have a worry for our friends and our family. We have a concern for the economy and maybe our own finances. Of course we're right to be concerned and cautious. But that Easter day, Christ's absence from the tomb, reminds me that loneliness and fear and even death don't have the final words. Jesus is not in those places. He is not there. He is risen. Ultimately, Jesus Christ is in control. Even in the situation we face at the moment, even death doesn't have the final word. God offers you and me the richness of a life beyond. Where this life is, is purely a preface for what awaits us. That's why Christians speak of victory, even in dark times. So I pray for you today, even if Easter is not what it normally is, maybe, of celebration with family and friends. Nonetheless, the message of Easter itself, that Christ is not there in those places of death and defeat, but that he has risen. And that will give you a joy and a hope which will last well beyond this day of Easter. Amen. So we're going to pray together. 
why don't you get into a position that you feel most comfortable praying in? For me, it's with my palms facing up and my eyes closed, but whatever works for you is absolutely fine. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for what we've heard today. I want to thank you for everything that we've had to think about this weekend. I want to thank you for Jesus rising from the dead, for the promises within that, and the fact that that is for each and every single person. I want to thank you, Lord, for the hope that that me gives us. And I pray, Lord, that that hope can go with us into next week. And Lord, do guide us where we can share that with others. Lord, I want to pray for our government and our key workers. Lord, give them wisdom and keep them safe. Lord, as we're preparing for the peak of the curve, as it's called, with the coronavirus crisis. Help us in our homes to be mindful of what we need to do. Help everybody to listen to the advice given. But also, Lord, help us not to forget our friends and our neighbours. Highlight to us, Lord, opportunities where we can be kind and we can serve others. Lord, I just want to pray for the things that are weighing heavy in our heads and in our hearts. Lord, I pray that we can give those things to you today. And I particularly want to pray, Lord, for people who are suffering at this time. For the people that we've lost. For the people who are grieving. For the people who are lonely. And the people who are scared. Father God, be close to them this week. If they know you already, Lord, call out to them. And if they don't know you yet, Lord, help others to invite them to you. Thank you, Lord, that you are our refuge. That you hear us and you see us. And Father, I just pray for the coming week, whatever it might bring. Help us to keep firm in the hope that you have given us. And to be thankful for each day that we have with you. Amen. Now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To add to Haley's prayers, we also pray for the Kellogg family. Brian's been taken into hospital and he's likely to be there a while. So um, sadly he is isolated from Val and from his daughters Simone and Helen. So Father we pray for them. We pray that you would restore Brian to health, help the doctors and nurses as they care for him. And for the whole family as obviously they're worried and miss him dreadfully. May your presence be very close to each one of them. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we come to the peace, we think of family and friends 
and those of our church family and all of whom we would like to receive the peace of Christ this Easter. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you and also with you. Alleluia. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. In a moment, I'm going to say the words, the Lord is here. And just as we recognise he's present here in our home, so the same will be true for you. He is present in your home too. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your son, because you raised him gloriously from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored us to eternal life. So with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we praise you forever, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Praise and thanks to you, Father in heaven. On the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread and wine. He gave thanks and said, This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, Dying you destroyed our death. death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts and remember his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Feed us with his body and blood that we may live and grow in him. Through him we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Body of Christ, broken for you. And so we say together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now for our final hymn, He Has Risen.
Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. And a blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Hallelujah.